Hey everybody, it's time to look at my custom work, the Super Saiyan Goku Berkai. This was part of my build off with Henry, aka Vegeta8259, who built Cthulhu to fight him, and Goku's gonna kick his butt. But, you know, whatever. Let's have a look and see what I got. <laughs> now, how did I did, did this? This is mainly Super Sculpty modeling clay. I've tried this out when I built my Crossbone X Ghost and it backfired on me. What I learned is to heat this stuff up or to make it solid, you got to heat it up and then you and the heat required will melt the plastic. So you have to heat it up separately. So I sculpted it on the head, cut it off like a swim cap. Here you see the sculpted clay. Cut it off like a swim cap, heated it up, reattached it, it had deformed a little, so I used the green stuff modeling clay, which I've used in the past, as kind of a sealant. You can see the, all that green stuff is kind of filling the gaps. And I used a Super Saiyan Goku plastic figure I had. And you can see when I heat it, you can see there's some gaps here and some gaps there. The shape will deform slightly as you as I heat it up you can see here and I used all that green stuff especially around the connecting part to the head itself to kind of fill in those gaps I then added on more pieces of hair that flare out a little bit more using both glue and some more green stuff modeling clay to kind of seal it all together trying to keep it as big and wide as possible Goku's hair on the fig on the drawing of Goku and the figures, his hair is so huge. The thing is, his head's so small. This thing has such a huge head, I tr had to keep the hair big, but I couldn't get it too off the page. I then used a rotor sanding tool to clean up and smooth over the edges. Now, rotor tools leave lots of lines, lots of grooves, and usually don't look all that well. But this is hair. There's supposed to be lots of lines and lots of grooves, so it actually worked out very well. Granted, it's hair on fire, but whatever. It worked out really well. It smoothed things out, kept things simple. On the body, I used some green stuff modeling clay to fill in the backpack, because I don't need it, to add a waistband and to differentiate the chest. I wanted to be able to see his under blue shirt, as well as the, or the orange shirt on top of it. The face... They give you multiple different faces for this bear guy. I went with the angry looking eyes. He doesn't have eyebrows, so I added those on. The hair I repainted gold. I was tempted to do yellow, but considering the head's yellow, I just went with gold. Painted the whole thing silver, and then painted the whole thing again with clear yellow, which gave it that gold shine. You can see, unless you know what you're looking for, you can't see the green stuff modeling clay in there anymore. The inside of the mouth had to be repainting as well, red. Otherwise, it just kind of comes of a tan yellow and repainted the entire body in the orange and blue. I changed his claws to black, I don't know why, just because I thought it looked cool, and repainted the entire inner and outer frame orange, except the tail, which I painted something else, I'll show you that in a bit. And the shoulder pads with the blue, I think that worked out well. They're a little bit loose but when you push in the arms a little bit more, they're more stiff. They give you multiple different uh, lengths for the arm. So at first I had it this length, but I eventually shortened it down one length because I thought it looked better. Now the stand did some interesting things with the stand. The stand I had a whole bunch of leftover modeling clay, so hey, why not? There is just and I cut a groove in this modeling clay and put in these clear pieces of yellow uh, folder, and in between that is some translucent prism paper. I've used this technique back when I did my Moonlight Butterfly. You can see if you look real close, there's some double-sided tape in there holding it all together. Only when you zoom in can you see that. At the distance, you don't even notice it. And you see it's very flexible. It's not really a piece of, you know, plastic or anything. Well, it is a piece of plastic. A very flexible piece of plastic. There is a hole drilled in the center. There's just basically a small piece of wood in the bottom of this. I cut in some grooves, so act like when he's uh, Goku screaming, he's actually fracturing the ground. This stuff is completely malleable, movable, you know, shape any way you want until you heat it. Once you heat it, it's rock solid. You can see, even now, I let it sit for a couple days, you can still move things around fairly easily. Problem is, 
as I molded things, you see fingerprints all over the thing. So when it was done, I had to sand it, and once more, I couldn't use the rotor tool this time. Did add some sculpting tools to get the grooves in, shape the land, make it a little more rough, and that doesn't do as much uh, damage as the fingers do. After a lot of sanding, a complete repaint, I expanded the cracks a little bit more, added some gravel and some little rocks, which I had to repaint those too to match the gray. And then I used some spray glue to hold everything in place for the most part. And I kind of like the, sh the cracks in the ground. The whole earth is shaking and fracturing. I got a clear cylindrical rod to hold them up, cut it at an angle so it would attach to the head. I wanted this clear because I didn't want it to stand out in front of that flare or in front of that fire. The reason is he is so heavy with that big hair, he can't stand. He can't even come close to standing. So what I, had to, what I was going to do is have him propped up here. I thought maybe it'll just be enough to hold it up, but eventually he did fall over a couple times. Nice thing I learned is, even when he falls at a fairly high distance, that head is pl plenty strong enough, or that clay rather, is plenty strong enough. Doesn't crack, doesn't break. It is heavy as sin though. So, on the boots, I repainted a little bit too, repainted the boots blue, added some yellow pinstriping to make it look like Goku's boots, repainted the tail brown, because Saiyans have a brown tail, I know when they're Super Saiyan they don't, but I don't care, it's a robot bear, bear with me. And overall looks pretty good, he, when you look at him you see, hey, that's what a robot bear would look like if it was dressed up as Goku. But like I said, he's ridiculously back heavy or top heavy or whatever heavy. And here you see him next to the Goku figure I kind of modeled his hair after. You can see the hair is so huge on Goku. Now, like I said, ridiculously back heavy. I, I was thinking I, the, the uh, clear stand would be enough to prop him up. It wasn't. So what I used was two earth magnets. Earth magnets are essentially very, very, very strong magnets. So strong that when I glued the magnet to the back of Goku's head there, the magnet would pull off the glue. In fact, a couple of pieces of the clay as well. So eventually what I had to do was use a little bit of green stuff modeling clay to seal that magnet in there permanently and then repainted it later so it kind of didn't stand out. But that'll hold them in place. The fire effect on my old display box display box was getting old and droopy and I knew it had to be replaced so I decided to send it out with a bit, bit of a flare as it were. Used the translucent paper and stuffed it into cracks which I cut with a box cutter. Extended the cracks from the action base all the way out through the base to act like he's actually you know, destroying the base as he's exploding. A little bit of shaky cam, a little bit of double sided tape to hold everything in place, and then a small fan near my feet, which was blowing up as I did the shaky cam, kind of completed the effect. And here you see with the fan, as I'm not shaking cam, it stands out a little bit better. It didn't have it quite blasting quite that hard, but you get the idea. But it gave it a little bit more of effect that he's actually, you know, roaring and shaking the place to its core. Well, guys, what'd you think? Did you like the kit? Um, I know this is part of a build-off with Henry. It was all in good fun. I got to play the evil wrestler persona. I kind of enjoy playing, maniacal laugh and all that jazz. It was fun. Henry and I are friends. We have fr fun with this. It's a giant gag, and I like it that way. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the review. Hope you found it informative. If you got any questions, ask them. I will answer them as best I can. Please stay tuned for more. I always got more reviews coming, and I will see you guys next time. Oh, and uh, one more thing. One benefit of using the magnets is that I can remove the Super Saiyan Goku Bear guy and use this stand for other things, like Yotsuba. Yes. A turret from Portal. Yes. Ava Unit 1. Yes. Rodan's the Thinker. Yeah, what?